and welcome to the Ben on Beer Show for a Tuesday. What's today? The 17th of July. That's right. It 2012. is the 17th. 2012. Uh, this is the second show. Um, we're going to try to make it a little bit shorter than last time. <laughs> That's great. Um, so we'll start off. I'm Ben Rayberg. I'm your host. And um, some people say I'm a beer expert, but I am certainly not. Um, and with me is Donovan Adkisson. That is me. He is the uh, owner and uh, producer. He's not the owner of this show. I own the show. He's he the owns producer the show. of the show. I produce the show. And it's on my network. Anyway, no, anyway. Uh, we're, yeah. we're good friends. So. We're on the Enero Media Network. That is correct. That is correct. If you, if you have a reputable show, <laughs> come talk to us. Come talk to Donovan. That's right. All right. Uh, it's been two weeks. I thought it was going to be a month. Yep. Which would be four weeks. Last time I checked, that's right. What have you been drinking? You don't want to know. It, has it only been vodka? Yes. Really? Yes. Just the once? Um. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's see. We did the show on July the 3rd. Yep. The next day was July the 4th, which I had an extended uh, vacay, if you will. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people hate that word, vacay. Okay. So um, I wound up drinking Jim Beam Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and just a little bit Saturday. And then I had vodka one time this last weekend. So, yeah. I did not have any beer whatsoever. I'm hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would say that's a shame, but really, you know, if you don't have a beer, it's fine. Hey. I'm not... I'm not one to say you suck if you didn't have a beer every day, or yeah. you haven't had a beer for two weeks. What's wrong with you? Well, it, except for the one that I just swizzled before the show. Shh. Oh. We're supposed to taste it for the first time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. Well, <clears throat> my palate was wrecked with an atomic fireball, so I think <laughs> it was appropriate that I cleaned, <laughs> that I cleaned my palate with um, a nice... Victory Brewing Company Pale Ale. Um, atomic Fireball. An Atomic Fireball. My my one of my most hated candies. Well, loved to hate uh, from the eighties when my brother was the athletic one. He mm-hmm. played uh, little league baseball. My favorite part about going to the games was the concession stand. Now and later's and laffy <clears throat> taffies and Atomic, atomic fireballs. fireballs. Yep. And my mom used to go to the warehouse places. Um, ours was called Price Club, but it's just like Sam's Club. It's the same warehouse. You know, you can buy a pallet of paper towels for $30. Oh, this was in Colorado. No, this was New Mexico. Sorry. New Mexico. When I was growing up. Oh, okay. <clears throat> not sure why we're going off in this tangent. I'm not sure either. Let's let's go. She <laughs> used to buy the whole, you know, retail pack, the thousand yeah. uh, atomic fireballs. So I had them at... A thousand. I had well, I don't know if it's a thousand. Maybe, but it, it maybe two hundred, but it was a bunch to it me. It was a plethora. To an eight year old, it was a lot. <laughs> it was I am the talk of the neighborhood quantity. Oh, okay. Everybody was your friend. No. No. Not but, really. Okay. But I did to get to, to spend them as I please. I got to figure out what happened when I hit him on the head on um when I smashed him on the concrete with a hammer. Yeah. You get to see the center without having to bite it open. It's and, great. And what was the center? It's just layers of hotness. Yeah, there's a, a scale for that. Term. There's a scale for that. I forget what it's called. Do you know what it is? I read it one time. Yeah. I was no. reading about peppers. Yeah. Has nothing to do with beer, so mm, I'm not really sure what no. it is. It's some sort of unit. Yeah. Kind of like uh, international bittering units. Yeah, which I had no clue what the heck that <laughs> was, but I'm learning. Where do we go from here? Oh, I last drank... That thing that we are going to drink again on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, last, it had to be last night, I had, oh, that's too bad that it's not that memorable. Um, wow. I won't, I won't say that it's not memorable. I just, I've had so many different ones this week. <laughs> I had my last uh, Dale's Pale Ale out of that six pack. That's what I drank last night. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said this week. This is Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Something wrong? No. Nothing. Okay. Nothing's wrong. Uh, Sunday night, 
Yeah, that was the day before yesterday. I had a 22-ounce Russian Imperial Stout from Stone Brewing Company. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, it was wonderful. It sounds large. It was another one of those, you know, you're not worthy. You oh. Know, you probably won't like it, um, but they're not they're not as crass on that bottle as they are in this one. Uh, yeah, I wonder if that one will wreck my gums. But they, <laughs> they um, Stone dates that. You know, they say what year they made that mm-hmm. Imperial Stout because you can age it. Mm. Uh, and it, because it's such a high alcohol content, you can age it like five, ten years, I think. Well, wow. how much alcohol does it have in it? Enough? You're the one at the computer. I don't know. <laughs> I would imagine it's around 10 to 12. <laughs> it's it's heavy. Okay, okay. That's fine. Hey, fair enough. So we so I guess we need to be done going through the uh, what we drank last. Yeah, he had beer. I had <laughs> whiskey and vodka. Well, which has nothing to do with the show. Yeah, but it was good. Oh, notes from the last show. I mentioned something about uh, an IPA or, you know, the king of IPAs, the New Belgium Ranger, mm-hmm. is uh, so pure. It's like chewing on a dandelion. That's right. And your wife looked that up, and mm-hmm. she sent me a link to a New Belgium a dandelion ale. That, That's which right. Was, which was an awesome uh, callback to the show. Well, not only that, but she came across a website of this lady who actually is a home brewer. Mm-hmm. And that's what she brews with, is yeah. using dandelions. Yeah. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to do a, a dandelion ale. Yep. Maybe next year or sometime, but either way, we're going to call it She Brew. She Brew? She Brew. Okay. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I'll go with it. Dandelions are, in fact, edible. I did not know that until the question came up. I guess it was on the last show. Yeah. Well, I mean, I knew they were edible, but you and I both agreed that we didn't think they would work well in a beer. Well, I didn't know. I've never heard of it, but yeah. there are... Evidently, some people who have and were mm-hmm. successful with it. I'd like to taste it. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm quite interested in. Uh, uh, they probably did that. a really small batch, but like, how do you? You go talk to a dandelion farmer. <laughs> you go out in your backyard. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I I usually spray for those. But uh, yeah, dandelions are edible. I did not know that. Some people say they make a delicious salad. Well, also apparently. Uh, as my wife is pointing out in the chat room, dandelion wine is actually more frequent. Understandable. I'd okay. like to try that too. Yeah, I yeah, want to see too. if it's bitter like hops. Yeah. You know, I I've always said, oh, it's oh, it's awesome, just like chewing on a dandelion. But I've never chewed on a dandelion. I'm a big fake. Well, if I did, I wasn't coherent when I did it. So. Mm. Mm. All right. So, there's that. At the at this point in the show, I'd like to to announce the brewery of the month and, and talk about it a little bit, but we don't have one. Um, so I'll use this time to tell my audience and the listeners and whoever that I need a brewery of the month. Um, I have asked a couple of breweries. I don't have any responses, but I I just need to call. Mm-hmm. Um, but if anybody wants to recommend themselves as the brewery of the month, if you are a professional brewer. Or heck, a home brewer. That'd be neat. Yeah. The home brewer with a label. There you go. Um, I can't tell people to buy your stuff, but hey, <laughs> bring you on to talk about it. Um, we could even profile a home brewer. Hey, well, you know, if they uh, if they give us samples and we can drink it and, and it's good, hey, yeah. why can't we say, hey, you need to go talk to this person? Yeah. You need to put this recipe in for a uh, long shot. Which is a whole nother conversation. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. See, I, 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 don't, I don't recall the legalities of, of a home brewer being able to sell beer. I think we covered that somewhat in the first show, but... Uh, it's along the same lines as um, the methods that founded NASCAR. That's vaguely familiar. <laughs> Bootlegging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's what I thought it was. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> Nothing like starting a sport by trying to uh, carry alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yep, and um, driving like your uh, next six months depended on it. <laughs> because it did. Yep. It did. Um, that That's it. We need a brewery of the month. I want to talk to uh, professional brewers. I, it's kind of a, a shameless grab at some swag, you know, T-shirts, glasses, whatever, to put on the camera here so we can uh, push the brewery and, and uh, perhaps get more people interested in craft beer. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, it may be... Uh it may be shameless, but at the same time, it's, you know, we feel like that if this show becomes popular, hey, you know, the, the, yeah, we can get the word out. I, I would love nothing more than to, to preach the word of, <laughs> of, of craft beer. Because there you go. It's, um, it's such a shame that, of what they, what, what InBev puts in a can. <laughs> it's, it's saddening <laughs> at what people drink every Friday night. Yeah. Anyway. Those uh, of us that go down to the local store and only pay $5.02 for a six-pack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it that consistent? 502? I know exactly how much it costs, 502. It's different every time for me, so mostly because I'm not in the same place. Yeah. Well, I have a store that's less than three miles away from me. It's $5.02 for a six-pack of 16-ounce Ice House, a.k.a. Well, <laughs> gut rot. Well... <laughs> I'm not really talking. You you enjoy a beer. It's you bitter. Don't, you don't just drink the whole six pack and and you go for more. No no you no. You drink I, it because you enjoy it. I like the taste, and that's fine. Uh, you have to give it to the to the big breweries for making a consistent product. You yeah. know how hard that is for breweries to 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 make something that consistent in that large a quantity. Too. Yeah yeah. But the fact that they they pump it up with corn and rice it's like genetically modified chickens mm-hmm. it's just not natural <laughs> it may not, it it may not be natural but it gets you drunk it gets you drunk but that's not really the point we're trying to make here yeah i know i know responsible <clears throat> well like I, hey like i pointed out you know when i found out that they actually had guinness black lager that was awesome so and of course, that was closer to nine dollars a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> this um, this that I brought tonight. This was uh, ten nineteen, I think, if I remember correctly. For a six pack. For the six for these six. Wow. Yeah, and of course, yeah, you could buy like four six packs of of natural light for this, but. Well, then I'd be drinking water, but. Yeah. Mm. Then you'd be drinking corn and rice. <laughs> But uh, what we're gonna what we're gonna take hold of tonight is uh, Victory Brewing Company's Headwaters Pale Ale. Now, a few things about this brewery: it was founded in 1996 by two friends who met in fifth grade in '73. One of them uh, worked an apprenticeship at a, uh, a craft brewery here in the states, and then went for a year uh, to train at a brewery in Germany. Mm. So he's. he's this company has really deep um, Belgian and German styles, mm-hmm. and they are all top notch. Um, don't know what the other one did while the uh, while <laughs> I guess Ron was at at uh, school in Germany, but he, he also came back from Germany and um, worked another stint at another brewery, mm-hmm. and they finally decided it was time to start their own. So they opened the doors. In '96, uh, they are in Pennsylvania, um, Downington, Downingtown. Is that right? Yeah, Downington, Pennsylvania. They have uh, a restaurant. I think they have a hundred seats in the restaurant. Um, mm. uh, a retail store, you know, mm-hmm. they their swag. Yeah. And the commercial brewery. So, th- um, the f- source of the brewery's water is a spring that feeds a creek 14 miles away. So the the water actually comes from the earth, travels 14 miles to the brewery. So they... They do put it through a filtration process. Right, right. Um, but it keeps its mineral content and its so, character. <clears throat> so it's kind of like the whole philosophy behind Coors, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the Coors you drink here on the East Coast is brewed in Tennessee. 
So they're not getting the Colorado mount, Mountain? No, that's not Rocky Mountains. That's not Rocky, yeah. Nope, that's Appalachian. They're lying to me. Luckily, I don't drink Coors. Just so. saying. The, mm. the big breweries. I know. They're not. They got to do what they got to do. You know, Budweiser has, uh, or at least InBev, has 49% of the, I will say, 49% of the um, American beer market. Really? Yep. Yep. Hmm. Oh, uh, and we're going to, I'm going to crack this right now. For all you uh, listening to my podcast while running, there you go. That's for you. <laughs> get home. <laughs> Yeah, get home so you can enjoy one. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to pour this. Um, it's got a kind of an amber color. Oh, you could hear that, too. That was great. Yeah, that's that's that really encourages them to get home. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> awesome. Look at me. I'm about to spill this. But craft beer has an awesome head to it, typically. And if you see the commercials, the big the big beer commercials, they just slop the beer in there and mm-hmm. it overflows and it falls out so easily. But no, this has a creamy head because it uses real stuff. You know, I've never I, I've never really understood it's that whole grain beer. <laughs> <laughs> I've never understood that though, where you see them, you know, they walk up to the bar, the the barmaid or whatever, with the big glasses and pour it up, and I mean, it's just foaming and coming down the sides, and mm-hmm. I'm like. Okay, I, you know, I, I, I guess that is supposed to be appealing, but that's a that's a mess to me. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, they slide the beer down and it stops and it's all overflowing and it's splashing everywhere. Yeah. What the hell is that about? I, it's a crime. Yeah, the more you the more you lose, the less I can drink of it. Um, now I didn't read very heavily upon this. Um, style this beer itself, but they did. Um, they brewed several different batches of the same recipe, only changing each time the hops that they used. And in this this particular uh, recipe, they found what they were looking for. Um, so there's one type of hops used. It's not like a uh, multiple edition and you know, mm-hmm. some for finishing some for aroma um and they could have been added at different times but i understand this to be one um one type of hops and they're you know good malt and um that good pennsylvania mm-hmm. 14 mile spring water <laughs> which is really neat because they they're all about sustainability and, and right. They, I think, every a percentage of the proceeds of this beer was given back to some kind of green initiative or clean energy initiative mm-hmm. there in Pennsylvania. So, hopefully, not Solyndra. No. Okay. Isn't that a California-based company? I just had to throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, you know. Not to go in that that direction, but you know when you hear green energy and all of that, that's the first thing you that, that comes to mind now is Solyndra. <laughs> so. Well, not me. I I don't read the news a whole lot. I know the <clears throat> the Solyndra story vaguely, but they went bankrupt. Well, sure they did, but there's plenty of companies that didn't, and they're well, doing that's true. good stuff. That's true. And if you read about how uh, Germany as a country is using solar energy, they have really got some numbers to put up they well i know this is replaced quite a bit of their energy i know this is off topic but my wife actually came across an article where it showed an entire village that was solar powered Uh and i said yeah that's great because it's actually producing more power than it consumes yeah but as i pointed out with the technology that we're using right now what it costs to invest in the solar panels and the longevity of the solar panels you will not have them paid off before you have to replace them that's one good point, but that's no reason not to invest in the development of newer technology. Isn't this a beer show? Yeah, I know. Shame on you for taking me down that Cheers. rabbit hole. Cheers. There's your beer. It's got a funky head. You poured it right. <laughs> I poured it right. Yeah, you poured it right. I didn't pour it. I don't it's pour got beer this on this. It's little volcano in yeah. it. Yeah. 
great. Yeah. You take a smell and you smell some fruity aroma from the hops. And um, a little bit of bitterness, but it's, I mean, it's, it's yeah. a pale ale. It's supposed to be bitter, but not strongly so. It does have a very good smell. It is it is fruity. It is pretty well balanced. It's an easy drink. Um, and the bottle even suggests that it's um, kind of a summertime, yeah. bright day, cheery. But don't spill it, so... Um, I could definitely see really you see this after after a good run. Yeah. Not that I run, but okay, uh, but I could see it. A few tweets ago, I pointed out an article at Runner's World that um, kind of makes a case for beer as a post-run drink. You know, that reminds me. I said something about that about a year or so ago. I think I actually said it to you or I tweeted it to you or something. And uh, the fact that there was a study that showed that drinking beer after exercise was better than drinking water. And you said, how can that be? Beer is a diuretic. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't look at me. They're the ones that did the study. Alcohol is a diuretic. Can you hear me? Yeah. Alcohol is a diuretic, but um, apparently, well, we all know it's mostly water. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. They say it's at least as good as water for hydration, but it's also got nutrients, um, a regular, moderate beer intake um, promotes uh, bone strength, I think that the the Runner's World article read. Mm. So it's good. Um, I would rather you run three miles a day and have one beer than <laughs> run one mile and, and have three, three beers. beers. <laughs> Uh, now you just took all the fun out. Mm, not really. <laughs> you just took all the fun out nah. of it. How about how about this? How about I run one and a half and drink a six pack? <laughs> 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 because I'm gonna need it to get over the, how I feel after running the one and a half. Well, if you do it every day, you're the runner, not me. <laughs> I, am, I am not much of a runner lately. Every time I've tried to start. <clears throat> My knees hurt. My ankles hurt. I can't. I have trouble walking the next day. Ride a bicycle. Yeah, been thinking about that too. It there's Leave always it. an alternative. You can't just say, "I'm too broken. I'm gonna sit on the couch." Well, I don't. I'm. I do the Bowflex twice a week, but. Hmm. But I just started that back. But now Lee and I have talked about. We have talked about. Uh, you know, getting the bicycles and all that. Anyway, this isn't a beer and exercise show. Well, it could be, but... All right, so we're tasting this beer. I don't and, want to say it's citrus, but it's fruity, but not sweet. I'm not going to say so what I said a, earlier. Kind of a <laughs> kind of a sour um, flavor. And then the hops kind of activate on the back of the tongue. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Not much hoppiness up front or in the nose, but... Well, on the tip of the tongue, it feels like... Well, if you let it sit there and rest, feels mm-hmm. like it feels like uh, someone taking a needle and sitting there and going. <laughs> but <laughs> otherwise, it's a great. I mean, it's a good beer, and you're right. It the the hops hits me on the back of the tongue, mm-hmm. in the throat, and you know it's all over your breath. You can't hide that from a cop. Yeah. No, Ossifer, I was not <laughs> drinking. I was not. I'd be the guy that was on the motorcycle that whenever I turned, my helmet was full of beer. You have seen that one, right? I don't think so. It's it's one of those don't drink and drive commercials. I would imagine. Yeah. And the guy's like, Zzz, and the officer, you know, pulls him over. And he's like, have you been drinking? And the guy turns around and he's got one of those full face helmets. And it's full of beer up to about right here. Yeah. Was that was that at a, um, it was at a, a, a roadblock or something like that. Or so, no, so I've seen the one where the car's full of beer. And he gets at a, a roadblock and he rolls down the window and it, everything, all the I've seen the that one too. Out. This this one's very similar. Mm. It's very similar. All right. Good beer. It is. It I, I Now what's the alcohol content? The alcohol content on this one is not found at this moment. 
I would imagine it to be around five and a half, six. All right. If I'll that you much. What, to, uh, Google is our friend. Um, well, that is whenever. Here lately, whenever I type Google in my browser, it goes google.com underscore forward slash. I don't understand that. All right. So what is the name of this one again? Because it's hard for me to keep <laughs> up with it. Headwaters Pale Ale. Okay. Headwaters Pale Ale. Alcohol content. And um, I never read the bottle until now. Of course, uh, I kind of told you everything. Malted barley, hops, and yeast are the building blocks of beer, but none of these elements would exist without water, the essence of life. The waters that feed our brewery just begin just over a dozen miles away. That's 14, if you yeah. didn't hear me last. Yeah, that's a dozen. <laughs> over a dozen. Just over a dozen. <laughs> it's a baker's and his wife's dozen. That's right. And it's 5.2% ABV. Yeah. So it's a decent session beer. Yeah. Um, having worked with the watershed advocacy groups since our inception, the... We value our headwaters, our source in many ways. That was kind of the founding idea of this brew, but um, we think you'll value them as well when you taste this firmly crisp and aromatically arousing pale ale. Are you aroused, Donovan? Aromatically arousing. They find some funny words. It's kind of like wine. Yeah. Yeah. They find the, the most I, interesting I, words to describe. I guess I could be aroused, but we'd have to end this show. I'd have and to look at someone other than you. I know, right? Mm. You, yeah. I'd have to go inside. All right. Not that kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about glassware in our... Um, you know, sometimes... I say sometimes as if we've done 100 shows. We have. Last in show. Last show, we... We did a brewing topic, which was an overview of the brewing process. But right. I want to, and I want to, kind of horizontally move towards uh, a different topic: uh, tasting beer, mm -hmm. and so uh, maybe the enjoyment of beer. Mm. Um, in addition to, you know, maybe one time we'll talk about a brewing topic. Right. This time we're going to talk about a tasting topic, which is beer glasses. Now. I'm not talking about that thing that makes that cougar at the end of the bar look good at 2 a.m. <laughs> Those are referred to as beer goggles. Uh, I'm talking right. about beer glasses. The vessel with which you deliver your beer. Wait a minute. Is that, is that, a, tap? Is that a nuclear vessel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mess you up. <laughs> through, through which you deliver the beer from the tap or the bottle or the keg which would also be through a tap, to your mouth. Um, a lot of people use a solo cup down here. <laughs> oh God, I, suddenly the song is now going through my red head. Solo, solo cup. cup. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that in the car one day, and I nearly crapped my pants. It was so funny. <laughs> Um, but maybe I need to end the show that way. <laughs> you know, I can get away with playing 30 seconds of hey, it. Hey, <laughs> maybe we will. But it's not that kind of show. It's not a solo cup beer show. No, but that'd still be nice. Uh, I am working on a feature on the website that involves clear solo cups. Oh, yes. okay. Nice. To be... Uh, Brought to be up at a later, later date? To be disclosed at a later point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but right now I'm going to talk about glassware, and I know very little about it. So I'm well. Hell, you're an expert then. I, <laughs> if I'm on the, if I'm the guy being interviewed on CNN, I'm the expert. You're the expert. But this isn't CNN, so I'm going to depend on this book I have by Randy Mosher, and if we can get that up on the screen, it's called Tasting Beer: mm -hmm. An Insider's Guide to the World's Greatest Drink. And that is not just a statement of opinion. It is the world's greatest drink. For some reason, back in 1588 in New York City, coffee became more popular as a breakfast drink over beer. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that beer at one point was a breakfast drink? And should still be. 
<laughs> but yes, uh, I think it was 1588 on the sum chart that I saw somewhere on the web. So you know it's true. Oh, of course. It was on the <clears> web. <throat> yes. Um, coffee overtook beer as the uh, preferred breakfast drink. Oh, that reminds me. That, that, that reminds me of a funny, yep. what I think is a funny now. Not that they would ever sponsor this show. However, what coffee house is now going to start serving alcohol? Can anyone guess? Call in if you guess. If you have the number. <laughs> yeah. If you have the number, call in and tell us. But no, seriously, I thought that was that was funny as hell. Starbucks. Starbucks in the Atlanta area is become it has become the um or will become I'm not sure if they've turned it on yet, but Yeah, I'm not sure either. They but. are a test area for Yeah. Uh, alcohol, well, beer and wine in the evening. You know, and the reason why they did that was because they said they wanted to be the place that people could come and sit and have their little meetings. Sit and have and meetings and have a glass like of wine. Yeah. That, hey, yeah. that's cool. I'm okay with that. You know, capitalism at its finest. That's fine. That's that's great. Yeah. As long as it's serving quality well, yeah. beer. But that's what made, made me think <clears throat> of that when you said it overtook coffee. I mean, coffee <laughs> overtook it, rather. Yeah. And then suddenly... You know, it's like we're coming full circle. Well, I, mean, I will but. say that when Starbucks opens at six in the morning, they're not going to serve beer. Well, yeah, I know that, but still. <laughs> and I, I highly doubt that they'll serve um, alcoholic drinks at every location <laughs> eventually. I, I think it's it's still going to stick to select markets. Mm -hmm. You can only have a, a glass of beer at Starbucks in the evenings at, yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah, but probably after two p.m. I think or it's whatever. five to ten. I want to say it was 5 to 10. Oh, is it 5 to 10? Yeah. Now, as long as that glass of beer is not five freaking dollars like their damn latte, you know. Don't order a latte. Well, I don't. It's $1.98. If you, get, if you use a reusable cup like my, my travel mug, <laughs> if you don't have to use a cup, you get a 10-cent discount. A cup of joe, $1.98. I don't buy it's coffee still, from Starbucks. Still kind of pricey. It's like buying a pot of coffee. I drink instant Folgers at the house. I take the water, throw it in the microwave, heat it up, pour it in. I'm good. You're not a connoisseur. Well, I don't, I'm not a coffee connoisseur, but I like the taste of coffee. I do, too. And for some reason, I'm like the other 25% of this country who's getting hooked on <laughs> Starbucks. It's I crazy. can't do it. I can't do it. I have been having Folgers. I've had Folgers this past couple of weeks. Now, see, there's a difference. I do the instant my yeah. our oldest son Devin does the packets where you it you do it you dunk it like tea now after he got on those. after he got to those he classifies the instant coffee as dirt coffee dirt coffee he does not like it <laughs> and i'm like no i agree with you that the other is is better it's better uh better tasting better seems, quality seems but seems to be smoother it does but the other's not so bad i would i would venture to say that those little Maxwell House Folgers bags have instant coffee oh, yeah, well, in that's them. That's kind of what I would think. They have coffee grounds, but I think it works so quickly because you're supposed to dip it up and down for a minute. You know what would be cool? Is if you could get beer that way. Oh, you just open a packet into yeah. cold water? Yeah. No. Oh. It would never work. You, you just want to sneak them into work. <laughs> I think you just want to have you want to, like. I used to have a refrigerator you take in my your office after after lunch bathroom break, and you just take your little shaker glass <laughs> in there and mix up a beer. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I, did I say something was wrong with it? Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm just saying. I bet that's your intention. I think that would be that'd be awesome. <laughs> Tea style beer. You heard it here first. Tea style beer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know the little. Yeah, that's it. Before long, they're going to start mixing it up for you and put it in a can. <clears throat> <laughs> it's a full circle. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, we're lazy. We don't like to mix our own drinks anymore. No. Everything we... comes in a can. Everything's in a can. The lemon and raspberry iced tea. The... <laughs> I don't know. I'm not even going to go there. I like the chat room. Tea style beer. Why are we curing cancer? We need to get on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think our time is better spent working on uh, beer in a packet. Okay, now that I have completely derailed the show, where were we? We were at... Uh, we're talking about glasses. Beer glasses. Yes. 
Um, I'm just going to mention a few, and I'm not going to go in depth at all. Um, the first I'm going to bring up to the camera is an English tulip pint. And you might recognize this shape of glass um, for just the name that's on it. Um, I only have ever seen Guinness served properly in one of these glasses and really nothing else. This is about a 16-ounce glass, but it's um, it's called the English Tulip Pint, and it uh, it's a 20th century glass, and it's found a home especially for Irish stouts. Nice. So, um, not sure what advantages you have of drinking an Irish stout out of here, apart from the fact that it holds more than a 12-ounce glass. That's probably it. Um, that's about, yeah. I think it's a proper English pint. Hmm. Oh, they come in pints? <laughs> <laughs> so, there's that one. Uh, and then we have the no-nick pint, which is kind of funny. Are you going to ask why it's called the no-nick pint? Yes, why is it called the no-nick? Well, you see that bubble about three-quarters of the way up? <laughs> I did this last show, too. I know, I that's fine. The mic. There's a bubble in the, in the outer edge of it, mm -hmm. about three-quarters of the way up. That's supposed to hold the foam mm -hmm. and uh, do something really special with the foam. Um, also, it keeps uh, it keeps the rim, the very top of the glass, from hitting the next one to it. Ah. So they don't smash together and uh, get chipped, and you don't nick your yeah. lips. Yeah. So it's a no-nick pint glass. No-nick, I get yeah. it. Um, they say it's really good for um, lighter session beers. And it happens that Fuller's is one of those really good session beers. Um, also, John Courage is uh, awesome. I just can't find it outside of John Courage. Courage. It's an it's an ale, um, a lighter, <clears throat> lower gravity. It sounds courageous. It is. It gives you courage. <laughs> <laughs> gives you courage to eat that uh, shepherd's pie. Ay, I like it. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, then we have the um, the snifter. And my example of a snifter is New Belgium's Globe. Mm-hmm. Um, 0.47 liters. I'm sorry, but that looks like something I need to put brandy in. It was uh, very popular and probably still is uh, popular for yeah brandy because you, you you hold it like this mm -hmm. and you you do like this and you go you look all sophisticated mm -hmm. and whatever and you think about your money yeah <laughs> maybe that's the reason why I don't drink out of one of those I don't have any <laughs> uh, these uh, around Christmas time these are really affordable yeah from directly from the brewery you just order them I think you can get a pair for four bucks. Why is, it around, that. why is it around Christmas? It's it just, a holiday spirit. Oh, okay. Yeah, you okay. buy a twelve pack of Fat Tire or uh, Snow Day, yeah. and you you get this little code or whatever, and um, you get it's a buy one get one free or, or okay. it's a really cheap price on these, um, but they're really nice. There's a laser etching in the bottom, even with an HD camera, you can't tell what that is or even that it is etched. All you see is my hard water stains on it. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you about that because. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that uh, Sam Adams likes to advertise is their glass. Is their glass with that that laser etching? Yep. And I was talking to Chad earlier today, and I and I told him I said that's got to be BS. It's that one right here in the book. For you audio subscribers, I would recommend the video tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm pointing at things and mouthing words. Does the etch? Does the etching really do anything? It does. Uh, as you know, the bubbles. Uh, the foam in the beer releases the aroma. Mm -hmm. The laser etching, the uh, nicks in the glass, mm -hmm. basically, they release they um, they release a surface tension, mm -hmm. and that creates a bubble that just continually flows up the beer, releasing the aroma. And so the entire time you're drinking the beer, it's got a little bit of foam and a little bit of smell. I guess that's more. Up. I guess that's more uh, science than. Uh, yeah. I was aware of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can see, especially in those uh, Sam Adams glasses, and those are cheap too. I want you to know, you tricked me. There wasn't supposed to be any science in this show. 
It's just supposed I, to be oh, about I just drinking. I said surface tension, didn't I? It's supposed to be about drinking. You asked. Okay. You don't have to bring up the science. Okay. Well, I wanted to know. My tiny little brain wanted to know. <laughs> All right. The uh, You know that clock's wrong. I looked at it when it began. As long as it's going at the right speed. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> that is a Cafe Press original. It's a piece of crap. <laughs> it's still up on your wall. Yeah, I know. Well, anyway, I can't afford anything better. <laughs> the next glass I want to bring out is the... The... <laughs> yeah. You can see that me looking. You can hear me thinking. <laughs> you can, <laughs> You can hear me drinking. The stemmed tulip, or Libby glass. Now oh, this isn't cute. this isn't the same glass that's in my book here. The uh, the tulip glass kind of comes up. Um, it's a little. It's a lot like the snifter, mm-hmm. but it comes out and makes a bowl. But then the the top edge starts to come and widen again. Right. And the one in my book here widens almost all the way back out to the point, the outer edge of the glass. Yeah. Um, but this one um, still has that same effect, and it comes up just to a vertical at the top instead of all the way out again. But um, this was fun to drink Coke out of uh, on the midnight shift when I had nothing else to do. <laughs> was that was, was that all that was in it, was Coke? At work, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. I needed the caffeine. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I understand. Um, this is almost your best well-rounded glass because it holds the foam, it releases the aroma, mm-hmm. and this tulip shape, this outer edge, matches the lips so well. Oh, it's 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 just a really good all-around glass. I like it. It's you it's could drink cute. a strong ale or a pilsner. Well, I wouldn't recommend a pilsner, but you know any of your your, your yeah. Belgian beers. Um, I think that palm is a Belgian. Yeah, the chat room points out that they were really so embarrassed when uh, this one particular uh, person drank the beer out of the tulip instead of the snifter. Really? <laughs> that is quite... whatever. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I'm just trying to share some of this interesting, <laughs> an interesting aspect of drinking beer. Um, no, I know, I know, I know. I mean, look, it's to me, it's... It's interesting that there is a culture around yeah. glasses that are different shapes and sizes mm-hmm. for different styles of beer. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm a red Solo cup kind of guy. <laughs> but, you know, I'll take the most expensive beer and I'll drink it out of the bottle or I'll pour it up in a plastic cup. I don't care. I will drink it. Yeah, I did drink that Stone Brew um, Imperial Russian Stout out of the bottle. I was standing in a pool. I was standing in my pool, drinking from the bottle. There you go. It's easier to keep it in my vessel when it's in the bottle. It's, I would have spilled it <laughs> yeah. for sure. The next glass is something I bought today, and it was so awesome because I went out, and I I had to find it because I wanted the show. Yeah. Um, and I found it. I these, found a pack of four for 12 bucks. These are awesome. I love these. These are very nice. They are Pilsner glasses. Now, this really uh, thin, tall shape shows off the pale color of the beer. And they do awesome little special effects whenever your face oh, is yeah. right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. But the, I think this is just fun to drink out of because so you can see it coming from far away. <laughs> um, well, you know what? That makes you think you've got more than you really do. Yeah. Look, my glass is all the way full, man. <laughs> I like those. Those are nice. It, it is really neat. Uh, this is this particular one's made out of really thick glass mm-hmm. and uh, probably has more of an insulating uh, property to it than some of the other German Pilsner glasses I've seen, which are really like paper thin. Mm-hmm. Um, being that way, it's it's a really thin cone and. I would say that the heat might get to the beer faster because it's less it's a smaller distance from the outer edge to the center mm-hmm. um and it just it, it appears to be uh to have more of a surface to accept heat 
So where can someone find something like that? I found this at the department store in the mall. Okay, um, cool. Belk, Dillard's kind of thing. A yeah. company called Libby. They make a lot of glasses. Mm-hmm. They, I think Walmart carries Libby brand, but um, they didn't have these. <laughs> <laughs> what and Walmart certain, didn't didn't they have something? Weren't half off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know. These were great, um, but yeah, Amazon's got these. For, I think for like twenty two something for a set. Um, but I'm looking forward to drinking a pilsner out of here, or yeah. or anything in that similar style, a Hellas or um, something really light and and golden. Well, b- and hey, busy. I tell you what, be sure to uh, whenever you pour it up with that pilsner, take a picture and put it on the blog. Oh, I will. Yeah. I will cuz I'll I'll probably review whatever beer it is yeah, and yeah. I'll, I want it in the proper glass. Well, of course. The uh the vice beer vase. I got this from um a visit on a Thursday night to Taco Mac. D- d- who? Taco Mac? Never heard of it. It's them. a chain. Well, they run around Atlanta. Um Oh, okay. Taco Mac is is a a great place to try out beers. They've got so many on tap, and so many in the bottle. And every Thursday night, they have what's called Pint Night. They have a a, a brewery of the month. Mm-hmm. They have several beers from that brewery. Mm-hmm. And on Thursday night, if you go and order something from the brewery of the month, one of those beers on the list anyway, right? You get a pint glass. Nice with the the beer and whatever. So. That was the purpose. Nearly every Thursday night was to go up there and get whatever it was. was probably good. I, I wonder, didn't have a bad one. I wonder how many people actually make it out of there without dropping the glass. You know, we used to forget them. I think twice or three times I, I just forget we completely forgot it. We just got up and left. <laughs> I was mad, too, because it was I so bet you. nice. And the people were like, cha-ching, another one. Now they just take it back and give it to somebody else. <laughs> we, we did go in one time. After we've forgotten them, mm-hmm. they already cleared the table. You couldn't walk up there and say, hey. Yeah, no. We probably could have. We didn't want to make a big deal about oh, it. Oh, okay. I love but, my glass. Uh, of course, that's good for um, Belgian whites, um, Leinenkugels, which I would recommend, but they are owned by Miller Coors. Leinenkugels is owned <laughs> by Miller Coors, which, which doesn't take it away from the quality. It's just kind of sad to think about. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> well, that's about it. You know, the, the the different glass styles are mainly to me. It's just fun to to drink out of a different style of glass, especially when it's tall. You know, the, um, I don't know if anybody saw the the movie called um, um, it wasn't Strange Brew. It was Beer League, I think. Well, they all went to Germany for this beer drinking tournament. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the tournament, it was like the 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 main challenge was uh, drinking out of this boot. It was a glass boot, actually. It's called Das Boot. <laughs> das Boot. Yeah. Okay. And uh, B O O T is actually uh, Boot. It's kind of I think it's a submarine in German. Anyways, this is a boot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And the whole movie was really stupid, but it was supposed to be stupid. One of those parody kind of things. Right, right. But I want one of those glass boots. It's like a 40, <laughs> a 40 or 60 ounce. Hey, that sounds awesome. Glass of, of beer. Where can we get one? I think you can buy one. Mm. I'll bring you one back from Germany. That You going to Germany? Eventually. Okay. I got a friend that's over in Germany. Yeah. Wait a minute. Can he ship stuff? Yeah. Yeah. UPS is a worldwide company. That's right. That's right. May have to talk to him and see. He's been over there. He and his wife, she's in the military. Yeah. They've been over there, I don't know, maybe three, four, five years or so. I don't know. My wife would correct me. but He might can. I, I don't know. But it'd be neat to, to, just to have the glass. Boot. I'll talk to him. Not to really drink. Yeah. It, three but years but so far. Okay, it. cool. They they visited us back in, I think, October of last year. They were actually in the States. Yeah. It was good to see him. But... uh yeah, that'd be cool. Well, I don't have any news because uh, I'm no totally news. unprepared. No news. You suck. <laughs> um, there's really nothing new about the show. I'm looking for a brewery of the month. Hey, I can always look and see on Google, is there any beer news? No, we won't do that. We yeah, will there's not. not much. I mean, I, I've got a Google Alert set up. That's kind of how I yeah. get what I get. 
Um, I do need to. No, I've got an alert for Beer Georgia set up, not just beer. Mm, you need to beer probably. Would, well, beer gets like the crimes, like the perpetrator stole a six <clears throat> pack of beer. Well, and that's put no it in good. his pants. I don't want to tweet no, that. That's just no, wrong. No, no, no. Well, maybe what you need to do is is put it up for like Beer Georgia, Beer Alabama, Beer South Carolina. Well, North I'm Carolina. not going to stick a regional. I'm just going to you know Whatever. craft craft beer. Yeah, that works. Um, small brewery kind of thing. Yeah. And um, and and to the question in the chat room about recycling beer bottles around here, I have no idea. You can give them to your favorite home brewer. If yeah, I guess they could a, use them. Uh, if they are pry off top, yeah, the twist tops you know, can't do anything. You can't really. use anything, yeah, because you can't. I mean, I can take that top and I can pop it back on, but it doesn't really do a good seal. I mean, it's not going to do a pressurized seal. No, not well enough to hold back the, yeah. the carbonation. Yeah, but if you're home brewer, you know, you somebody you know brews beer, um, ask them if they want the bottles, but do them a favor and rinse them out as soon as you're done drinking out of it. <laughs> I've gotten floaties of like dried beer that was originally in the bottle show up in my homebrew. It's mm. kind of nasty. Yeah. It's not something you really want to... No. No. No, 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 no. But, um... All right, so we have no news. No news. Um, I'm... No news I got is good news. You got nothing. I got nothing. You are so unprepared. Hmm. Tell me about it. All right. I brought my glasses. Well, that's all we needed. That's all we needed. I brought the beer. We had a good tasting. And we had a yeah, and I'm I'm still tasting. It's 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 still a good beer. I like mm. it. It's uh it's warmed up a little, but it's you know, that's the that's the difference between the big corn and rice breweries and craft beer. Is you can drink this stuff at room temperature and it's still palatable. Well, I know. I mean I've always heard that true beer is actually something served at room temperature anyway, so Yeah. I mean, My first taste of um Decent beer. I won't say it's micro brewed, but mm-hmm. it was Newcastle Brown Ale, <clears throat> and that surprised me because it was it wasn't bitter and overpowering, but this one was cold. But I'm told that that in England, when they serve it in the bottle, the blue star on the label is actually a reactive uh, mm-hmm. reactive to the temperature, mm-hmm. and when that is like bright bright blue, it's serving temperature. And I'm told that's like uh, high 60s. Hmm. So it's not really cold. Okay. Well, this is, like I said, this, you know, it's taken us, I don't know, we poured this, what, about half hour ago or so? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Something like that. We, it's, uh, it's still good. We kept yapping. I'd have this down if I wasn't talking. Yeah, I know. I, I'm still thinking about tea-style beer. Anyway. All right, well, carry us out, man. Tell us, Tell us what you want to... What do we want to know here? Well, you know, the last thing I always want to impart is to enjoy your craft beer responsibly and your non-craft beer responsibly. But we'd like you to, uh, I can say we, we both support this craft beer initiative. Yep. Yes, we do. Yep. And uh, to, don't be a dick. Don't drink and drive. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's even, what, what's worse than you rolling your pickup truck over is... Finding 109 natural light cans all spread about the car crash. Oh, uh, yeah. That's so, no fun. Nobody wants to ride their bicycle to work, and uh, that should be your only motivation, really. I see so many people like who look fairly reputable mm-hmm. riding bicycles to work, and all I can think of is, man, the DUI sucks. <laughs> It lost your license. But the reason that there is a DUI offense is because drinking and driving is stupid. Yep. That and is. Uh, that's that's all I want to do. Don't be don't be stupid. The one thing that I would like to uh, I'd like to point out, of course, is the fact that if they want to su- subscribe to this, you can find this show on iTunes. Yep. Um, we got the video thing worked out, so the video feed is up on iTunes as well. That's right. Just go to beenonbeer dot com slash iTunes, and that'll take you right there. All right, I just learned something. It's in your show notes. <laughs> <laughs> you put it there. <laughs> I guess I did, didn't I? <laughs> yep. Oh, and one other thing that I'd like to uh, ask is, 
um, <clears throat> for this show and all of the other shows that we do, if you'll go to anero.tv and sign up for the newsletter. Um, I'm trying to get that going so I can start sending out newsletters each month or if there's new shows or, you know, to, to, to wake you up that, hey, we're doing a we're doing a special bent on beer, you know, yeah. on, on location or something like that, whatever. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. <laughs> so, or to warn you away from certain drunken <laughs> yeah, tirades. <laughs> yeah. Don't be, yeah, whatever you thought you heard this pet, never, no, you didn't. You did not hear it. That was not me. <laughs> so uh, Follow my blog at uh, Ben Rayberg, I'm uh, sorry, not BenRayberg.com. You can probably find it from there. Yeah. BenOnBeer.com. And... Um, my Twitter handle is at Ben on Beer. Uh, my personal Twitter feed is at 42 Flows. And um, that's going to be about it. We made it a little bit shorter this time. Yep. So, Donovan, let's uh, carry us out. Have a good week, two weeks, month, however long it's going to be. Enjoy your craft brew. See you next time. Media Network, your reality distorted.